I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to The Bigfoot Project. I grew up on a farm in southern Maryland, and we had over 100 acres of mostly wooded land. Our property was adjacent to other large swaths of heavily wooded acreage. To cut to the chase, I was an avid hunter growing up, so much that during my teens I would go squirrel hunting daily after getting home from school. One afternoon in October, I went out alone. I was 16. However, this time I decided to go further into the woods. As I hiked along, my mind was somewhere else until I noticed I was in a part of the woods I've never been to. I was surrounded by old growth trees and the terrain was rolling hills. I looked down into the bottom of this hollow and saw a large grove of laurel. I slowly made my way down and suddenly was overcome with a feeling of dread and that I was being watched so much that I froze and began to look around, expecting to see another person, but didn't. This fear kept growing to a point that I felt terror, for lack of a better word. Without notice, I saw movement in the laurel, footfalls, and branch snapping. I called out that I wasn't alone, hoping that whoever was in there would stop trying to scare me. The footfalls stopped, but my fear was still high. I was armed with a Ruger 77-22 bolt-action rifle, I leveled the rifle at the laurel and again called out for whoever was in there to know that I wasn't alone. Then a chattering, almost laughter, came from the laurel bushes. It was weird. It sounded like a cackle. Filled with fear, I fired my rifle above the laurel. Then all hell broke loose. The laughter became a growl, and the laurel was crashing. I could see that from the top of the bushes that it was coming towards me. I again called out and again fired. It didn't stop. I turned and ran up the slope. Now I should mention that this was dusk. The light was going fast, and by how far I had gone, I wouldn't get back to my house until after dark. When I crested the top of the hill, I looked back and saw something hairy step out of the laurel and look up at me. Now, as I write this, I'm getting a chill up my spine. I can still see it looking at me. I cycled the bolt on the rifle and fired at it. I missed as it didn't respond. It stepped fully out and stood up. Whatever it was, wasn't huge. It was about five to six feet tall. I know it doesn't sound like a Bigfoot, but it had wide shoulders, long arms, and covered in hair. I took off as fast as I could in a panic. I kept falling down and tripping. I was getting shredded by branches hitting my face, but I didn't care. I could hear whatever it was chasing me. It was barreling through the woods, but not directly behind me. What's odd is, it seemed to be running parallel to me. After about 15 minutes, I could see the lights of my house through the trees, and this thing was still running near me. The issue I had was that if I turned right to head to the trail to go to my house, I'd encounter this thing, so I passed the trail and headed around the trail and into the field. When I was in the field, I was screaming for my family. I turned and cycled the bolt and fired into the woods again. It was now completely dark. I listened but heard nothing, but I could sense it was still there. I ran to the house and went inside. When I encountered my mum, I was crying and covered in blood from all the cuts and slashes in my face. My older brother grabbed a shotgun and went out. I followed him with the fully loaded rifle, and it should be said, this was against my mother's wishes. We both fired into the woods and yelled at whatever it was. I never encountered it again, and I never went hunting by myself ever again. My mother didn't believe me. She thought it was probably a black bear, and my other siblings made fun of me. However, my grandmother, who lived in the house on the farm for 55 years, told me she'd seen stuff before and had even seen lights above the forest years back. It feels good to get this off my chest. My name is Matt. I fish, hunt, trap, work, and love to be outside. Prior to my encounter, I had seen the Patty film and had watched Harry and the Hendersons as a child. My knowledge of Bigfoot, aside from that, was really slim to none. I grew up with my father and stepmother, who believed in the strange and paranormal stuff, and I was always told to keep an open mind to the strange things around us. But none of that could have prepared me for the rifle opener on November 15th of 2006. This opening morning was the fifth year I'd hunted this blind. Just like in years past, we, my ex-father-in-law and I, went out the day before to clear out any leaves and debris and take down any limbs that may be in our way. So, being there the day before, I wasn't worried about anything. 
According to my GPS, from camp to my blind was 1.3 miles. It's pretty much all swamp from the cedars where we camp to the blind and takes a good half hour to 45 minutes to hike back there. And after I reach the blind, I let my body temperature come down before I put on all my heavy gear. I'd been at the blind for maybe 20 minutes and I got all my gear on. All in all, I'd been there for around 35 to 40 minutes and I was ready to rock. I looked to the east to see if I could see any light yet. I could see a gray-white line stretching across the sky, kind of cutting the trees in half. Once I looked back to the southwest, the direction I normally face, is when this thing started to scream at me. The sound was coming from the southeast. It was beyond loud. I grabbed my headlamp and my rifle and made a pass from right to left and then back again. I couldn't see anything yet. I thought it was in my lap. It was so loud that I could feel the vibration coming from it. Once I made the second pass back with my light, I hit the dirt. Once on the ground, I was tucking myself as far into the blind as I could, and the first scream came to an end. It made a total of three sets of screams, which felt like an eternity, but if I had to guess, I say it lasted for two to three minutes. After the last scream ended, all I could hear was ringing in my ears and my heart pounding out of my throat. I'm not sure how long it was, 30 seconds to a minute, before I heard a loud thud, like a tree falling over. Then it sounded like a bulldozer going through the woods. At this point, it's still completely dark, and I'm so scared that I can hardly move. In fact, I don't think I moved from that blind until it was after 9 a.m. I recall thinking, Steve will be here any time now to see what that was screaming. But no one came. I'd later find out that three of the four hunters nearby had heard the same screams, but didn't know where they were coming from. Once I got to my feet and did a quick scan all around me, I started to focus on the southeast of my blind. I wanted to run out of there, but I didn't want to move. I still kept thinking someone will be here soon. The hours went by like minutes, and yet I'm still standing there shaking with a rifle in my hands. As the normal hunting light started to fade, I soon realized that I'm going to be out here in the dark again, and just about mentally lost it. I kind of snapped back to reality and said, I gotta go. As a hunter, this time of day is what we call prime time, just before dark when those bucks really start to move around. I didn't want to wreck anyone else's hunt in the front of the swamp, so I thought, I'll go halfway back and then wait until dark to finish the hike. So with that in mind, I stepped closer to my seat to grab my backpack and caught movement back to the southeast. Now I remember seeing two deer in the whole time I was there that day, and they were hauling ass through the swamp. Now I'm thinking, I might get a deer after all. I let go of the backpack and settled my scope on a gap about 150 to 200 yards out. I looked over my scope to see if I could see more movement. Shouldering the gun again, I realized that I was not looking at a deer, but I'm looking at a guy in a ghillie suit heading from me on the right side of the path. I lifted my rifle, put on my backpack, and started heading out as fast as I could without making it a full-on sprint. I hadn't made it but a couple hundred yards when I heard a loud noise coming from behind me. It was at this point it hit me that the guy I'd just seen back there wasn't using a flashlight and didn't have any orange. I'm not sure what that last noise was, but it sounded like a loud hoof, and I was gone. The screams I heard that morning were like I said before, beyond loud. Started off real low in tone and turned into a blood-curdling woman scream, and long Whatever it was had to have some huge lungs. You could feel the vibration through the whole thing, but more so at the beginning and the end of the screams when it was the lower tones. I have never told anyone this story in my entire life. I'm 44 now, and this encounter happened when I was 10. I never thought anyone would ever believe me, so I just kept it to myself all these years, but I'd love to get it off my chest. So my family had a large chunk of land in upstate New York when I was growing up, and one day in early fall, my younger brother and myself were out playing and climbing trees in one of our lower grazing fields for our horses. The trees had started changing colors, but the leaves had not started falling yet, so you couldn't see very far through the dense forest. I climbed a very tall old oak tree, and I was trying to get as high as possible to try and see if I could see the adjacent field. As I got higher, the wind was getting stronger and blowing the branches around pretty good. I'd say the sway was about two feet either way, so like four foot in total movement. It was really dumb, and I started getting scared, and was about to start coming down, 
when I slipped and came tumbling down, getting stuck in a crook of a limb about ten feet still off the ground. I broke my back when I hit the branch and started screaming and crying instantly, yelling for my mum. And my brother, who was watching from the ground, took off running to the house to get her. I remember screaming for what seemed forever and eventually heard some footsteps coming and assumed it was my mum or stepdad, but I couldn't see because I was stuck facing the tree trunk and I couldn't turn around. Next thing I know, I saw a large hairy hand that looked like a gorilla's hand grab me by the shoulder. When it did this, the pain that shot through my body was so intense, I actually passed out. And when I woke up, my mother was sitting over me, telling me an ambulance was coming to take me and just sit still. To my surprise, I was on the ground and propped up against the trunk of the tree. My mother had told me that's how she found me when my brother had led her to me. I believe my crying had attracted it, and maybe it was watching us the entire time. I don't know, but it definitely lifted me out of the crook and laid me gently against the tree, luckily, because my mum never would have been able to do it herself. I probably would have been stuck there for quite a while, and the fire department probably would have had to cut the branch to get me out. I was able to make a full recovery after a spinal fusion, and we eventually built a dirt bike track in the lower field about four years later. One day while riding the track, I decided to ride the track backwards out of boredom from riding the same track every day, and coming around the corner from the long straightaway, I saw it standing next to a big tree watching me. And when I locked eyes with it, it simply stepped behind the tree and disappeared. I believe that Sasquatch used to enjoy watching my brother and I play, and watched out for us over the years until we grew up and moved out of that area. Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. I think you might find this video of interest as well. If you have a story you would like to share here, you can email me, Lynn Smith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com.